Thank you for joining us today for our Student Alumni Roundtable, focusing on the MA in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages, which is also known as our TESOL program. Um, thank you. Uh, the purpose of the roundtable is so that our current students and prospective students um, have an opportunity to connect with our program director, who is also faculty, and to meet some alumni. Um, this gives you a chance to ask questions, discuss current program studies, and receive tips on how to transition from student to graduate, as well as examine next steps after graduation. I am Dr. Renee Dorn, GSEP Director of Alumni Relations, and the rest of our alumni relations staff who will be assisting are Sofia Henriquez, our alumni relations analyst. And then along with our alumni relations team is Alexis Goldston, who is our graduate assistant. So if you have any questions um, regarding alumni relations or just to keep that connection with GSEP, um, you can always contact our office. Um, to the current students and prospective students who have joined us today, if you have any questions throughout the roundtable, please use um, the chat and the Q&A to put in your questions because we'll definitely get to you and uh, ask, ask those questions to our program director and our alums so that you can get the answers that you are looking for. Um, we also have with us today our MA in TESOL program director and professor, um, Dr. Kevin Wong and uh, Faydana uh, Yalkunen, and she's our grad assistant for the MA and TESOL program. And then we also have Usman Khan, who is career design counselor for career services. So you'll get an opportunity to hear about uh, career services and the services that they have available to students. And then once you graduate and become alumni, uh, they'll be able to tell you how they can help you once you are an alum. So I always am pleased to acknowledge our wonderful alumni who take the time out of their schedules to participate in our GSEP events. And so today we have three alums um, from the MA in TESOL program. Um, we have Esmirna Brito, Carlos Jimenez and Faydana Yalkun. Um, and it looks like we also have Sophia. So um, we have four alums today. So um, welcome to all four of our alums today. Um, at this point, I would like to introduce our program director, Dr. Kevin Wong. And Dr. Wong, um, I want you to tell everyone about the MA and TESOL program and discuss any possible new and upcoming projects within that program. So. I'm passing it on to you, Dr. Wong. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Doran, for the wonderful invitation. And hi, everybody. Thank you for coming to this uh, alumni roundtable. Um, the goal is to hear from alumni, so I will keep this short, um, but I'm really excited to share about the TESOL program, um, as well as updates that we've had. <clears throat> so as you may recall, the TESOL program is about learning how to teach English or language uh, in general um, from preschool through university, both in the United States context as well as abroad, and also perhaps to pursue doctoral studies uh, after the degree. It's a short 11 months, an intense 11 month program, uh, but full time residency in Malibu and Calabasas campuses, um, where we have lots of different courses related to second language acquisition, pedagogy, and the relationship between language and culture. Um, and it's also scholar practitioner. So we, we are in clinical placements um, in that third term to kind of get that experience. So we're not just theory, but also practice. Um, let's see, I think what's exciting is the, the alumni that are here represent lots of different pathways that you could take this degree and leverage it. So that's really um, kind of a testament to what you can do with this degree. So I think the most common career outcomes would relate to, you know, obviously an English language instructor from children all the way to adults in person to virtual to hybrid because of where we are now with thinking about instruction. Um, a number of our uh, graduates go abroad to teach. Currently, I have I was just talking to somebody in Japan, one in Korea, um, uh, who are abroad teaching uh, English, another one in Spain 
two in Spain, actually. Um, and other people also might pursue an, maybe an ESL college professor role or working in a community college related to English language development or language education. Um, actually, an alumni I was just chatting with this morning, apparently I talk to alumni a lot, um, uh, just secured a job um, at Cal State Northridge in art education which is really exciting and our education as it intersects with language so really wonderful um, and then beyond the teaching some people might go into um, student services in some way working with international students because of that understanding of, of uh, language and culture um, uh, so with that i think a few new and exciting things that we have in our program is um, that we now provide a lot more autonomy for students to choose to choose kind of courses that they might take in addition to the core curriculum. So we still have our core curriculum of the masters in TESOL, which is um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten classes, which is 30 units. Um, but now we have the option for specializations that people can, can take. So it'd be two additional courses, one in the spring, one in the summer, where they can get a master's in TESOL degree with a specialization in organizational leadership and learning, or a specialization in leadership in pre-K through 12, or primary secondary school for those international, um, or uh, learning and design and technology, or uh, leadership in higher education. So that is designed to give people um, the opportunity to leverage their degree even further to um, package themselves for whatever those next steps might be. Um, another way that we've now provided choice for our students is in the capstone. And I'll kind of end with this and one other point um, is with the capstone. Now you have the option of doing a practitioner oriented capstone or a research oriented capstone. And we were just thinking of those different pathways that people like to pursue after our program where some want to go into research or pursue doctoral degrees. So now with our capstone, um, in uh, with a research one, you're you're conducting a study, an action research study that you're then presenting and publishing, and um, you know hopefully so that it can set you up well for pursuing a doctoral degree. Um, otherwise, we still have our e-learning, I mean our e-portfolio that we do with the practitioner-oriented capstone, which kind of helps package your identity as a language educator for whatever those next steps are, so you could share it. And I'm sure Usman from Career Services can talk a bit about that if if that would be helpful for folks. And so the last thing kind of related to pursuing um, doctoral degrees is that we do have a pathway for uh, graduates of the TESOL program. So if they wanted to come back to pursue their EDD or their PhD, because maybe after getting some years in the field, they think that they want to uh, you know, uh, just go down that career path, then um, six units or two classes are transferred over to the doctoral program, which is a, a nice um, savings um, if, you know, thinking about the cost of education. And similarly, if people would like to then become credentialed to teach in the public schools of California, then there are also six units available to transfer into the Master of Arts in Teaching, the MAT program. Um, so that's a wonderful um, just opportunity, but it really depends depends on the goals you want to take. And um, I'm, again, just delighted to have this panel here just representing these exact pathways. So I will stop talking. And um, I'm happy. And I'll be here to answer any questions if there are any. So thanks for the time and space. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wong. That's a lot of good information, um, especially talking about being able to, um, after you finish this program, pursue a doctoral degree or transfer to another program such as the MAT program. So that's, that's good to know. Um, at this point, um, I'd like to introduce um, Usman Khan so that he can talk about career services so we can find out about even after you graduate from the program, what are some possible career choices, career options, how career services can help you. So I'm passing this on to you, Usman. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Don. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Usman Khan. I currently serve as the career design counselor here at the Graduate School of Education and Psychology. So Pepperdine is unique as each school at Pepperdine has its own career services team, allowing us to provide you with a personalized and customized experience. And our vision here at GSCP Career Services is that every graduate will have the clarity confidence and community to access, thrive in, and transform the future workplace. So our career portal is called Handshake, which provides students and alumni with access to employment listings, including student employment opportunities, events, resources, and appointments. And you can access Handshake through your WaveNet portal. 
Essentially, we offer three main types of services, career design sessions, document feedback sessions, and signature programs. I'll be talking more about these in order that I mentioned. So career design sessions are meant to help you clarify your purpose, to create a strategy and learn more about current online resources and help you develop an action plan based on your career development needs and goals. These are one hour long sessions known as career design session appointments. We also have document feedback sessions, which are essentially 30 minute appointments, which we, in which we provide you feedback on your resume or CV, your cover letter and your LinkedIn profile as part of your application process. And our signature programs include many opportunities throughout the year to help you connect with alumni, industry professionals and experts, engage in group vocational discernment experiences, as well as participate in employment engagement activities. And you can schedule your appointments and register for our signature programs through our career portal known as Handshake. And as Dr. Joan mentioned, all services are available to you as an alumni as well for a lifetime, including access to Handshake as well as our appointments and programs. And I'll be sharing the links to our website as well as our career portal handshake on the chat, which I believe it seems like Sophia has already done. But if anyone has any follow-up questions or anything that comes up, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Usman. Um, at this time, before I introduce the alums, I do want to mention that um, we do have someone here from Enrollment Services. Um, so if you have any questions regarding enrollment services, you can always talk to Ernesto. So Ernesto, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes so you can talk a little bit about enrollment services and how you can um, help the prospective students. Thank you, Dr. Darn. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time on the platform. Thank you, everyone, for being present. My name is Ernesto. I'm the enrollment officer for the Emma in TESOL program, and I'm here to help you. Um, as far as you, you know, going with your um, application process to the TESOL to learn how, you know, the application requirements are and how the admission process works. Uh, we want to make sure that you have all the information that is pertaining to you so that you know where the deadlines and when the deadlines are going to be, what steps are required, what are some of the um admission steps that you need to take, as well as the, um, the um, required um, documents that you need to uh, submit. Just do know that the application process is fairly uh, simple and streamlined and scaffolded, and that is intentional. We want to make sure that you don't run into any troubles or any obstacles when it comes to submitting your application materials. We want to make sure that the process and the application in general is um, stress-free um, and really right into the point. Uh, just so that you know, there are four main um, application documents that are needed for you to start your application and complete your application. The first one is for you to quite literally start your application. When you go online and you click apply today, you will be starting your application at that point. And then the one thing after that is going to be to follow up with just uh, four, uh, three different uh, documents after that. Those would be for you to submit your letters of recommendation. We ask that they be two letters of recommendation either from a professional source or an academic source. That means people that you have worked under, either in a professional setting or an academic setting. Um, after you submitted those uh, two letters of recommendation, you can also start working on submitting your transcripts. These have to be official transcripts from your undergraduate institution, and they can be sent to us electronically. And then the third and most important aspect of this application process is going to be your two-page statement of educational purpose. This is basically your why. This is how you're letting us know why you are interested in this program, how do you think this program is going to help you achieve your goals and aspirations in, in the future, and also to share a little bit about yourself, uh, what kind of experiences you've had, what kind of expertise you've had, and what would you like to learn from, from this program. So really, those four things make up the entire application process. As I said earlier, it's, it's simple in nature, and it's straightforward. But if you have any questions about that, I'm more than happy to provide you with more information. Um, myself or Dr. Uh, Wong uh, are more than happy to provide more information on, on, on this end. Uh, so please do not hesitate to contact us. I will provide my, my contact information in the chat for you as well. Thank you, Dr. Darn, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you so much, Ernesto. Um, now at this time, I'm so excited because now in the beginning I said we had three alums, but then on the slide we have four, but we actually have five alums who are joining us today. And so the five alums are Esmirna, Carlos, 
Faydana, Sophia, and Anthony. So welcome to all five of our alums who have joined us today. So for the current students and prospective students, you will have a range of information um, and experiences uh, from our alumni. So this is wonderful. So the first question I want to ask all of our alums is, could you tell us a little bit about your background, um, what you're doing today and why you decided to select the MA and TESOL program? So I'm gonna start with Carlos. Sure, thank you, Dr. Dorn. Nice to see everybody here. Um, yeah, so my name is Carlos Jimenez. Um, I am a graduate of the TESOL program. Actually, it was the very first TESOL program, 2011-2012 uh, academic year. So I graduated in 2012. And um, and yeah, I've, I've, I've been blessed to be able to stay with the Pepperdine, the GSEP organization. Um, I graduated in about 2012 and I taught in the private sector. I got a private uh, a, a language teaching school in Irvine. So back when the PESOL program was in Orange County, um, California in Irvine, there's an Irvine campus that we have. Um, and so I was able to attain a part-time teaching position. Um, it was my first teaching job. I had no teaching experience prior. Um, and that practicum course that I took as part of the TESOL program, that really helped me to uh, get an understanding of um, that whole environment, that whole teaching environment. Um, one of my professors helped me to um, prepare for the job interview that I you know, eventually had there. Um, so I taught for about a year. Um, and after about a year, there was a position open in writing support at GSEP. And so um, one of also, um, uh, a benefit I had was obtaining a graduate assistant position while I was in the TESOL program. So uh, my current supervisor now of 10 years was also my graduate assistant supervisor. So I was able to really build a solid relationship with, um, with, uh, with her there as a student. And so after about a year of teaching on my own, she actually reached out and said, there, are, there there's this job opening available for a permanent position in writing support, very similar to my GA position, my graduate assistant position as a writing reviewer, writing tutor. So now I've been blessed to be here at Pepperdine for the past, it's going on 10 years now as the manager of writing support. And so, um, you know, the TESOL program really helped me to um, gain a better understanding of really communicating with our students and really helping them, particularly with our multilingual learners, right? So I have that specialization thanks to, to Pepperdine. Um, but I would say why, why Pepperdine? It really kind of fell into my lap. I was in a bachelor, uh, I, had my, I got my bachelor's in English and linguistics. So I was really interested in language. Um, and I did have a natural knack for teaching. I have a, like, a lot of my family members are teachers. So it just was kind of a, a nice fit as I was moving. I went to a state school, Cal State Chico in Northern California. And as I was moving back, I researched um, TESOL programs and I found that Pepperdine was starting this, this new TESOL program. And so it just really fit really well at that time in Orange County area where I ended up moving and studying. So. Um, just blessed to to be here and to stay connected with uh, the university. So that's just a little bit about my path. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos. Um, the next alum, uh, Faye. So let's hear from you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you selected this program and tell us what you're doing now. Okay. Um, so uh, as a minority, who's back from China. So my background has shaped my experience and choices in pursuing the higher education. So I always love to uh, connect with people, communicate with uh, people from uh, different backgrounds. And when I came to select a program to apply and enroll in, I actually motivated by a very, uh, I think it's a coincidence because my sister and I got accepted to the same school. So she's an undergrad and I'm a graduate uh, student. Yeah. I think that's a very, like a, that's coins that make me feel like it's meant to be. So, and uh, the opportunity to like study alongside with my sister, at, like also add like extra sense of purpose of my decision. 
So, uh, and then when I came to the program, I started to realize that this is a very inclu inclusive and uh, diverse program. Everyone uh, actually having different backgrounds, um, everyone having different life stories, uh, everyone having different passes. So that is so fitting because when you talk to a person, you can always learn it, learn new things. And um, after we enter the program, we started to like the really um, extensive readings. And it's always hard at the beginning uh, because as a person, your first language is not English, like suddenly just got into this environment. But uh, after you try and after you uh, doing your time management and uh, devote yourself into this um, studies and you find like you learn a lot and also like every time when you add like seek help from the professor they're always there they're like oh so they're willing to help they're so so detailed so attentive everything you um you feel like you're a lack of they're always like encourage you they try to help you and everyone in this program is like so it's just like it's it's so nice it's like a big family to me to be honest so and uh i think that's why i like continue to stay in jscp i transferred to another student uh identity phd student and i'm continue to stay here but because i really love love jscp and everyone there is like it's so nice yeah so i just like have a very uh I, I think I just have uh, very deep uh, emotions about uh, the whole program and also GSEP. Yeah. Thank and uh, yeah, so, uh, and because of uh, I'm a PhD student, so I recently, like, I don't need to seek for any jobs or any things, but I do have like a little like suggestion for the international students. Like when we think about finding a job, it's more like, oh, I have to like do something related to teaching, but actually not. You can do like culture related uh, communications, translation or interpretation. So there's like a big uh, job, opportun job opportunities you can actually like think of. So, and you can also visit our career outcome uh, web page to find out more. Yeah, I think that's all. All right. Oh no, that's great information. Thank you, Faygana. Um, next um, alum is Anthony. So Anthony, tell us a little bit about you and uh, what you're doing now and why you decided on the TESOL program. Yeah, thank you. I'm Anthony Choi. Um, I was in the uh, 2020 um, class. I was the COVID class. So all of our, our um, courses were done online, interestingly. Um, so which for me, because I was a little bit older, I was actually a police officer working for the Los Angeles Police Department, and I was ready to retire. And so just uh, doing everything online was a bit challenging. But um, it was it was actually beneficial for me because I was a little bit, uh, um, you know, not too familiar with all these new technologies. So everything I learned has become so um, like easy now because of the going through the program online. Um, why I picked the program? Well, initially when I was retiring, I wanted to just get a certificate and uh, become like a, get a TESOL certificate and just become um, maybe um, teaching overseas or something. Uh, but then when I found out that Pepperdine had a master's program, I'm like, wow, this is, this is perfect. <laughs> it is exactly what I'm looking for. And the fact that it was Pepperdine University, I'm like, wow, I get to go to one of the most prestigious universities in America uh, to get a degree. I'm like, well, it was no brainer. So I'm, I'm very proud, you know, to be a wave and I wear my shirt all the time. And so just the fact that it was Pepperdine University was the main reason why I wanted to go through this program. Um, so now that I've, I've completed the program, um, for me, it was, it wasn't really more about getting a job. It was just learning how to teach English, um, properly. Um, and get formal training on it. And so what I wanted to do is really become a volunteer uh, and tutor people. And so that's what I've been doing uh, with some family um, in the Philippines. We're actually starting a school out there because we've realized that uh, for English speakers, there's a lot of opportunity. And for people in the Philippines specifically, the ones who speak English very well are usually from the big cities. And then the people in the rural areas really don't have as much resources. So we my wife and I decided to use what we have to kind of start a program for 
the people in those areas to help them so that they can be just as successful. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing. And it's like I said, it's 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 more of a uh, something we do because we're passionate about it. And we really just want to help people more than seeking a job. So everything I learned from this program, it really, really, I feel like I've really become prepared in order to just kind of fulfill that that passion we have. But, uh, but that's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. And welcome. So our next alum is Sophia. So Sophia, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you selected the TESOL program. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Sophia um, Xiongfa in Mandarin. I'm so, so happy to be here and to, so, to see everyone up here is so excited for me. Um, I'm doing actually substitute teaching and Mandarin teaching um, since I graduated from Pepperdine uh, in 2022. Um, I love it because it is so um, much diverse and new experience for me. Every day was new experience, learning experience for me. And I immersed myself in this new culture that are quite different from China. You know, I, <laughs> I went to different classroom because this job uh, gave me the uh, privilege to go to different classrooms and choose different levels. So I went to uh, K uh, to pre-K actually, pre-K to 12. In the first few months, I was being in the elementary school. Uh, I met very amazing teachers. I basically think they really deserve to pay much more because they're so amazing. <laughs> and also the last few months, I've uh, mostly in middle schools and high schools. And that's also quite quite different, um, but it's so exciting. And I can uh, hold my teaching skills and uh, class management skills and put that into my Mandarin class as well. So that was quite nice journey to me. Um, why I chose Pepperdine? Because, you know, actually I don't know Pepperdine at the beginning. I was known Pepperdine because one, one of my friends, she thought it would be a great fit for me because I taught ESL for two years in, in the middle school for 10 position in China. And I just love to come to California and I love to get into a well-recognized institution worldwide, right? And so um, I was really lucky to get into here, but the most reason was the connection and warmth I felt um, when, I, when I was back in China. I still remember um, what a thoughtful, professional, long email uh, uh, Dr. Wang wrote to me uh, regarding my questions and also uh, an MNA Eve who guided me all the way through until I arrived in the United States. So, you know, they serve, they need, and they really care. And I didn't experience that from any other schools, so. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And then um, our last alum um, is Esmirna. And so, but I just wanted to let everybody know if you have any questions for our program director, career services, enrollment services, or our alums, go ahead and put those questions in the chat or Q&A, okay? All right, wonderful. So Esmirna. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so blessed and I definitely feel honored to be here for this round table this afternoon. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I graduated from the TESOL program in 2020. It was the 2019-2020 year. Um, and initially, I desired to be a English literature teacher, actually, at the high school level when I graduated with my uh, BA. Um, and after about 10 years, <laughs> I decided to go back um, to school. I actually participated in a K-12 program for parents in Spanish. So, um, and after that program, I realized that there was still so much of a need for my parents especially with that language barrier. And even though I had desired to work in the K-12 field, I felt that indirectly, I would still be helping those students, um, but with the adults. So my question was for myself was, how would I advocate for them? And I said, well, I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna teach English. Um, so I shifted my vocation um, and I decided to serve in the need. Um, just like Sophia had mentioned. So at the time I was still working a nine to five um, and 
although my journey hasn't been very linear um, since I graduated with my BA back in 2010, decided to come back to school 10 years later. Um, I am in my first year teaching now um, at Pasadena City College at the non-credit division. Um, and I also, in the meantime though, I have participated in working with um, mental health, mental health field as a volunteer facilitator with NAMI. Um, and my vision is to be able to bridge that ESL teaching with that um, mental health advocacy, especially with my immigrant student communities. And as I was exploring the program and why I chose Pepperdine, um, well, one, it was one of my dream schools <laughs> to attend as an undergrad. That didn't happen, but that's okay. Um, and then also, uh, I just knew that one-year program fit for me at the time when I decided to go back to school. And a lot of it at the time also was for my own faith um, journey. Um, and that also solidified my decision, um, the schools, the program in itself um, for that faith-based mission to serve um, because I was also dipping in my purpose to serve as well. And I think that's it for now. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Esmeralda. Thank you all to the alums um, for telling us their stories. Um, at this time, I think, Sophia, we might have a question or two. So I'm going to pass it on to you. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you to all the panelists for being here. Um, we do have a question um, regarding how long is the TESOL program? And would I be certified as a teacher at the end of the program? And they're also asking about financial aid. Um, so I'll hand this question over to Dr. Wong. And then if Ernesto, you also want to jump in, um, that would be helpful. Thank you so much. Thanks for the question. And also thank you panelists for sharing. It's so wonderful for me to hear from each of you. Um, <clears throat> uh, so it's an 11 month program. So we'd have four classes in the fall, three classes in the spring, and then three classes in the summer semester. Um, so you have August off and that's it. <laughs> um, and then the second part of that question was... Oh, we can't hear you, Sophia. Sorry, you're muted. And my memory is just... Yes, thank you. <laughs> it says, would I be certified as a teacher at the end of the program? Thank you. Yeah, so the idea of certification um, in California context is called credentialing. It's kind of like the license that you would have. Um, so you would not receive the credential um, from the TESOL program. You would if you did the MA teaching, MAT program. Um, and the credential would allow you to teach in um, the public schools of California. So if you're interested in anything outside of the public schools of California, then the TESOL program is appropriate. Um, there is no internationally recognized certifications specifically for TESOL. Um, it depends on the country that you go to where they, if you were thinking of teaching abroad, um, where they might have certain requirements that they would ask, usually because there's no globally recognized way of you know, certifying TESOL, um, a master's degree is a sure way to ensure that you would meet, if not exceed every um, requirement that a, a specific organization might make. Um, in some organizations, um, you know, I'm so I'm originally from Asia, and a lot of organizations might say you just need um, a certificate, um, and that would be fine. So if you had a master's degree, obviously you'd go above and beyond the requirements of a certificate. Certificates are really hard because there's no way to really standardize how many courses you've taken, how holistic it is, how well it prepares you to actually teach with children. And our, our master's program is aligned with the TESOL International Standard benchmarks. So we make sure that we are preparing you holistically for um, teaching in a classroom or teaching language education. And I'll pass it to Ernesto to chat about um, financial aid. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for that question, which is an important question really to know and understand how can we you know, finance our studies through Pepperdine? Pepperdine as a nonprofit school really tries to give out as much uh, student aid as possible to each and every one of our students. Um, and so to that end, we have a combination of both scholarships as well as financial aid. 
uh, in, uh, a financial aid office that can help you navigate the intricacies of student loans. Um, on average, our students receive about $10,000 worth of scholarship. A lot of these depend on when you apply and how early you finish your application because we have certain application deadlines that actually provide different amounts of scholarships. So based on when you have applied, how early in the game you started up your application, if you completed your application by certain deadlines, then your scholarship award could range, uh, again, anywhere from seven to $10,000, perhaps a little bit more also, because there are other scholarships as well that you do have to submit certain applications in particular for those uh, scholarships, ranging from you know a thousand to another seven thousand dollars. So um, that being said, all students, domestic students as well as international students, qualify for these scholarships. They're available uh, for everyone, and really, I would say about ninety percent of our students do receive uh, uh, some sort of financial aid, and in a combination with scholarships and uh, student loans. We do have a financial aid office. They're wonderful. Uh, we can input the information in the chat as well uh, for you to contact them and they can help you also navigate the intricacies, as I said, of applying for federal aid uh, from the student government, uh, excuse me, from the, from, from the federal government. Um, for international students, please do note uh, with all transparency that um, federal aid from the government does not apply to you, but there are also different ways to uh, fund your education through other loans uh, from private uh, lenders as well. And all of those are financial aid can help you. Nevertheless, do know that the scholarships do apply for international students just as they apply for our domestic students. Thank you. Thank you, Ernesto. Um, we also have another question regarding for students who specifically know they want to teach adult English language learners at the community college or four year university levels. What type of preparation do you need? And I know that Esmeralda, you talked a little bit about adult education. So if you have any insight on that and any of our other panelists, um, feel free to jump in as well. Thank you. Oh, and Carlos, you as well, you are an adjunct. So we would love to get any insight from you as well. Oh, sure, of course. So uh, with me, um, like um, Professor Wong or Dr. Wong mentioned, um, to being able to teach at the higher education level doesn't require that credential because that actually was one of my um, concerns as well. Um, thinking that I had to do another year credentialing. But, um, you know, we were able to receive um, one that uh, being able to do the practicum. I wasn't, it was a little different for me because um, unfortunately my year was like right at the beginning of COVID. So, but I know with the other prior years and the years after now, um, you will be placed in that like higher education if that's what you desire to do. Um, and with your master's it's sufficient. So it's not something you would need to worry about. But in case you did want to do um, adult school within the K through 12 district, um, it would be a certification um, through the California, which is a credentialing, a specialized. And that one is called, sorry, I had written it down just because it's something I wanna get done, but uh, it's something, it's a credential that you would have to apply for. It's a two tier, I believe, um, in order for you to teach at an adult school, um, there with the K through 12, but at community college, I know that you you don't, your master's is sufficient. Um, and you would just submit your official transcripts if you're applying at a CC um, with your application. Thank you, yeah. Go ahead, Carlos. Sure, yeah, I will say, um, you know, starting out, I was interested in, uh, you know, attaining a, a community college, uh, you know, teaching position as well. Um, I did, I was, uh, I like logged on or I registered with this, I, I'll put the site in there, it's the Cal, it's the, this is for California, the California Community Colleges Registry, and once I signed up there, every time a local uh, community college position was available, you know, in English education or um, anything related to, you know, my, my degree, um, I would get an email, so a lot of things like in, in the Valley of Southern California, um, so that would come up. Um, I did apply at some point. I think like Pasadena City College had one open and I applied, um, but you know, um, you know, I wasn't successful, but I was able, uh, in addition to my, my full-time position here in writing support, I um, was able to attain an adjunct teaching position uh, here at GSEP. So I've had now um, an adjunct teaching position 
pretty much, um, I would say maybe the last eight or nine years, just teaching um, a few classes each term. Um, now I have a pretty consistent teaching position for one of the classes. Um, it's in the MS, Masters of Science and Leadership Pathways, and it's a foundational writing class. So it really ties into a lot of what I do at Writing Support, but I usually teach that every fall. Um, and that was just really, um, you know, I did apply, um, you know, through, um, through the Pepperdine system, but, you know, that was really just developing those relationships with other colleagues, other coworkers, especially in other departments, um, as, you know, a staff member here in my student services role and writing support. So, um, so, but fortunately, yes, now I am able to have that additional uh, adjunct teaching position um, apart from my writing support to, uh, position, which is pretty consistent, so. Um, but that CCC registry was very helpful as far as just giving me updates and things that were out there in the community college field um, as it pertains to, you know, English education. Thank you, Carlos and Esmirna. Um, they do have a follow up to that question. And I know, Carlos, you talked about uh, the registry, the California registry, and also Esmirna, some tips. Um, but the student was asking if you have any other um, different coursework that might be helpful in securing a position at this at these levels, things to study on one's own. Um, Ernesto, I can start off with you if you have any insight on this. Yeah, sorry, could you repeat the question? Oh, sorry, I meant Carlos. Oh, yes. Um, sorry, thank you. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, personally speaking, you know, I'm, um, I come from like a linguistics background, so I would say just knowledge of language in terms of linguistics, which is, I'm sure that's like a core course, I think in the fall, Dr. Wong would know, I know like applied linguistics, I don't know if that's the name, but um, that's really, that was really a, a foundation for just um, really getting a handle on, you know, English language, grammar, um, all of that, you know, um, a knowledge set that it, you know, really uh, accompanies with that teaching position, right, for teaching English. Um, and that was just kind of like a passion of mine. So, you know, as far as like individual work, you know, I, I, I patterned like my action research. I had a similar action research project in the final term of the program where I um, analyzed like language processing in the brain, you know, so I really um, focused my um, particular projects and my coursework that was um, kind of individual for us to choose on, you know, those passions, you know, my passion in language um, and just building on that really helped to, um, to really solidify my understanding of languages and just really prepare me to um, be able to, um, you know, be in the teaching role that I am in now, you know, so I would say that that's something that I can attest to really helping me. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Carlos. Um, we have another question. Um, the student asked, Hi, I want to ask if there's any available resources that I can learn in advance before I go to class. Because I don't have any background in education and language, I don't know anything about TESOL, so any help would be appreciated. Thank you. Um, so, Faidana, I'll start off this question with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sophia. Um, well, I am a very chill character, so I... I usually never prepare it before I really start something, but uh, if if she, if if we can really want to do some preparation, then I can uh, get to know some of the education series, especially related to uh, second language learning, like questions, comprehensible input, uh, Swan comprehensible output, and if you like. Uh, if you like uh, search comprehensive input, there should be lots of like related uh, links about the other series and you can just like uh, learn some or she can just talk to me on um, VChat or Gmail and um, I will be sure to send her something. Yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> Thank you, Faidana. Anthony, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, myself, I. I, I didn't have any teaching background in law, and I, I hadn't gone to school in 
maybe 20, 20 years or so. Uh, and so teaching was so new to me. I thought exactly the same thing. Like, I'm, I'm just not prepared. What can I do to prepare for this? And what I discovered is that you really don't need it because they're going to teach you everything you need to know to be an effective teacher. And that's how I feel. I feel like once I started the program, like they, you know, the professors are amazing and they will teach you, unlike a, a bigger school, is that you feel like you really got a one-on-one -on -one teaching um, tutor almost that's going to really explain everything you need to learn. And so I wouldn't be afraid to um, or, or feel like you need to prepare at all because once you start the program, man, everything is just going to click. And then every day you're going to learn something new. And, and at the end, I mean, you really, really feel like this is, this is something that you were made to do. That's, that's the feeling you really get after going through this program. So to me, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's some things you could do to learn about all these things, but you're going to learn it all. And so I, I wouldn't worry at all about preparing if, if that's what you're, you're thinking. Oh, I just want to add some one thing. Like we have lots of students from different backgrounds. We have students who never learn any education related. She learned a law and we have students whose bachelor degree is art and like just never worried about anything. Professor is going to help you and you're going to trans like tran tran like the, your transition will be like very smooth. Yeah. Thank you, Faidana. Um, so we have a question regarding um, how closely does the MA and TESOL program align with applied linguistics? Specifically, I was wondering if there will be more of an emphasis on linguistics or on teaching. And Dr. Wong, if you want to start it off and then our panelists can jump in and thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, applied linguistics is kind of like there's linguistics and then there's the applied part. So we're, we're making sure we it's an application piece. I think that um, on one hand, we are making sure you're aware of what language is, how language operates and how you can learn it from a first and second and perhaps third language, like with language acquisition. Um, but there is definitely a applied piece to it. So, for example, in our applied linguis linguistics class, you know, week by week, we go through different components of language and linguistics, morphology, syntax, and all of those pieces. Um, but it's always coupled with, so what does this mean for the classroom? Or what does this mean if you're trying to teach somebody in higher education, in pre-K, in like, kindergarten? So um, it's kind of like a hand-in-hand -hand conversation. I think that's what makes it different from just the linguistics major. Um, we're always thinking of the applied Another way to think about the program as a whole is in the fall semester. It's a lot of the what, what is language, what is sociology and language and culture together, what is language acquisition. By the time we get to spring, it's the how, how do I design a lesson plan, how do I think about assessments, how do I do classroom management. And by the last semester, it's the do. <laughs> so you're in the classroom and actually putting it all together. Um, so that's, so it's kind of, yes, it's linguistic, there's definitely linguistics uh, incorporated into it. Um, and, you know, as you see on the panel, some people had linguistics backgrounds and some not at all. Um, but, you know, we kind of, so I, hopefully it does address some of the um, needs of different people. Um, and I think another last thing, and then somebody else, please feel free to jump in, is um, because some people have language and like, linguistics as a background, they kind of go deeper into the language linguistics pieces of the textbook because it really is fascinating to them. And I'll find that the examples they bring to class are even more nuanced and detailed, whereas some others are like, I never thought about the difference between phonics and phonology and phonetics, right? Whereas some of you are like, I didn't know there was a difference. But um, so, and that's great too. So we kind of just meet people, you know, based on your own interests, and you can kind of take it where you'd like based on the assessments. That's my answer. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
looks like we got this question answered from Dr. Wong. So thank you so much. Um, we have a question. Um, I know that Anna is also here with us. She's also an MA and TESO alum. Um, so I wanted to know more information about what made you and Faye Donna um, pursue um, your your doctorate degree. Um, what made you? What led you to that decision after you completed your MA and TESO program? And I'll start off with Faye Donna. Okay. Um... So uh, when I'm in the TESO program, so I start to work as a graduate assistant for the TESO program. So I work closely with Dr. Wan and we start to uh, do the research together. So Dr. Wan is really like um, a big hope to me. Like he's like always so supportive and he's my mentor. So um, so I just like, I'll, I always talk to him about like, I, I really do wanna pursue a uh, doctoral degree and I really wanna do research. And he's being like so supportive. He always guide me through all the questions. And he also like mentioned that uh, we can do research together. So, um, so yeah, like basically all the reasons uh, just made me wanted to pursue this doctorate degree. And another reason is I really love JSCP. And like I said, it's very inclusive and diverse. Um, yeah, and everyone, um, every time I went to the office, everyone is so friendly. So that's uh, why I really want to stay at JSCP. Thank you. Anna, if you want to add any insight on this, we would thank you. Hi, everyone. So nice to see everyone. So many familiar faces. Um, nice to see Seamus here, too. Um, yeah, so it, it just feels like family. It really does. Um, Dr. Wang, um, I just texted him about you know a problem I have regarding my career and, and and it's just really um personalized I think that um this community is very personalized and you will get the support you know of course you have to um take risks and not be scared and you will hear no's but you're also going to hear yeses and you're going to be celebrated and um you know your accomplishments will be yours and um, the TESO programs and GSCP. So um, it just feels like family. So I have, I feel that I was with Anthony in my program. Um, we were all hybrid. We didn't meet until maybe the last month of the program, um, but we became all very close and um, uh, I feel very prepared for what I've been doing. Um, I collaborate with Esmirna. I'm working there with her at PCC. I work with Faidana. I, I work with Dr. Dorn. I, you know, it's just, um, there's a lot of opportunities here. And if you take the risk um, and you're not scared, uh, it's gonna happen. Whatever your goals are and whatever your plans are, they're gonna happen. And so, um, I did the, the TESO program. And from there, I still wanted to keep pursuing um, academia. I wanted to publish. I wanted to be in conferences. Um, and those are all opportunities and doors that um, GSCP provide for you. So um, I'm here with Faidana now. We're still, we're, you know, um, every term I think we're like, why are we here? Because okay. it's like, it's very, um it, it's very hard but it's also very like satisfying so to to be doing what you want to do and to further um to further the research and 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 um the work you know that people can benefit from so um that's why i'm here and i'm in the learning technologies program because I do want to keep working with um, with TESO. I want to work, my background's also in art, and I want to provide platforms um, that can benefit and support both of those fields. So yeah, and welcome everyone. If you have questions, reach out. We're always happy to help.
Okay, at this, thank you so much, Anna and Faidana. At this time, we have no more questions. So I'll hand it over back to Dr. Dorn. But I just wanted to thank you uh, personally to all of our panelists for being here. Your wisdom and time is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sophia. Um, one of the things I do have one last question and it is regarding um, if you're interested in teaching internationally. Um, Usman, I want you to sort of address that and how uh, students would be able to get assistance in trying to find opportunities internationally. And for any of the panelists, if you have worked internationally, please um, uh, talk to that as well. I think that's a great question for teaching internationally. It really depends on your career goals and where you want, what, want to relocate to and the requirements. So once you meet with us for a career design session, I can help you prepare and see what are the requirements of where you want to relocate and how do your current credentials and your current educational degrees and background, how does it equate or translate to the requirements in the place or the country you would want to move to? And then we can help you in short plan for that transition and also help you focus on how you want to brand yourself and market yourself to those prospective employers, how you want to talk about your career journey, how you would want to market your teaching experience and essentially focus on those skills you've developed through your program as well as prior experience and how you'd want to um, translate that to a different place. So that's in short. I also want to add for adjunct teaching opportunities and teaching in the community college level. There's a previous question asked about teaching in the community college and university level. It can be helpful to prepare uh, through guest lecturing as a means for your branding and also as a means to help yourself put your put you out to help put yourself out there. So you know by volunteering for professional development activities, for volunteering to serve as a guest lecturer for a class for topics or subjects you're passionate about, whether it be teaching Eng the English language or other languages, you can always, um, you know, volunteer and serve as a guest lecturer. So that can be helpful means to prepare. And I think that um, I've also heard of the project match that is Marina shared earlier. That can be a really helpful way to also prepare for teaching in the community college level because um, community colleges typically look, look for prior teaching experience in the community college level. So if you have some sort of internship or former program or even informal teaching experience, being able to showcase those talents and skill sets to the employer where you're applying and showing how you meet those requirements is a helpful means as well. All right, thank you. Was there anyone on the panel that is teaching uh, internationally or working internationally to ask to uh, respond to that as well? No, if not, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Usman. Thank you everyone um, for all of your insight, for all of the information that you have provided to, all, to everyone. Um, if there are any other questions that anyone may have after this, you can reach out to our um, GSCP Alumni Relations Office um, through our email at gscpalum at pepperdine.edu. Um, at our phone number 310-568-5649. And we're located at the West LA campus. Um, so uh, that's another way that you can connect with us. Um, we also have a LinkedIn group for our alums, but um, for everyone else, there is a specific GSCP LinkedIn group that you can also join as well. Um, for the roundtables, we always like to get your input and to find out how we did. So if you see on the screen, the survey evaluation and the QR code, please uh, use that QR code to go to a survey to let us know um, what you liked about the round table and things that we can improve on. And we always want um, our GSEP community to get involved with the different activities that we have. And so for the second QR code, that's another, um, form that you can fill out to let us know what activities that you would like to be a part of. So once again, thank you, Dr. Wong. Thank you, Usman from Career Services. Thank you, Ernesto from Enrollment Services. And thank you to all of our alums for participating today 
Esmirna, Carlos, Vedana, Sophia, and Anthony, and Anna for coming in as well. We had six alums today, so this is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, and all of you have a wonderful day. Thank you.